And um, we'll begin with a meditation. Tonight's going to be fun because I'm going to be clarifying so much about the world of the miraculous and talking about how beautiful, easy, fast, and powerful entryway into the divine for you and for anyone who is ready to experience the miraculous now. So why don't you just let yourselves get comfortable now? We're going to begin with a meditation. So let yourself settle in and fully relax by getting into a comfortable seated position. Your body now feels supported. Your spine is straight but relaxed. And now you can gently close your eyes. And let's begin by taking three nice, big, deep centering breaths. You're here now and available to your divine self and just relax and sink in. With each breath, you become more and more available to this moment, more and more present. On the inhale, you receive deep, deep, deeply. And on the exhale, just let go, let go, let go, let go. Each breath is cleansing and clearing. With each breath, you feel connected more and more and more. On the next inhale, deep, deep, deeply breathe in and let yourself expand beyond the confines of your physical body. And then on the exhale, let go, let go, let go, let go. And right now from this relaxed and open and receptive place, hold an intention for this experience that we are about to embark upon. Hold an intention to receive. Feel your capacity right now to let go of all obstacles to receptivity and to feeling love's presence. Just sink in to love's presence now and just receive now gratefully. Out of all the billions of places you could be in the world right now, you're here and you're opening yourself to miracles now. With each breath you breathe, you're becoming more and more resonant with the miraculous. Just feel that, sink into that now. That in itself is significant. That in itself is amazing. Because where you focus is where you put your energy. And where you consistently focus is where you believe yourself to be and what you believe yourself to be. Just focus on relaxing now and you feel more relaxed. Focusing on stressful thoughts, you actually feel physically stressed. So right now, while breathing deeply and focusing on your breath, you can focus on the most accurate and blissful thought of all. You are a miracle. When you came to this life, everyone who witnessed your birth knew you were a miracle, a tiny bundle of brilliance, the miracle of life in its most pristine and perfect form of pure potentiality. With your first breath, you made your grand entrance, a miracle come to life. Your huge spirit, the eternal unbounded part of you came into this life with your first breath and every moment of every day, that breath has rhythmically and eloquently animated you for your entire lifetime and it will leave ever eternal and unbounded still with your last breath. What an amazing being you are. Just breathe in the reality of that now. Breathe it in with all of your being. 
You are amazing. You are a miracle. Consider for a moment all that had to happen to have you here, breathing right now. Marvel for a moment about how everything in this life, proximity of the sun to the earth that allows the trees to grow, to breathe oxygen into the atmosphere, all to sustain and support your life as you breathe here and now. All of this set up for you to be here, to be able to breathe, to be alive right now on planet Earth. You are miraculous. Your life is miraculous. And right now you are recognizing the miracle of being here now. You are recognizing the miracle of how much is happening for you. You have ears that can hear this, eyes that can see and open and close, hands that can touch and feel, skin that can sense. You have the ability to be participating in this experience right now. Something created especially for you to remind you of who you really are. You are a miracle. Start to appreciate all that already is, all that's already happening to you now. Some say you can view the world as if everything is happening to you or as if everything is happening for you. In reality, Everything's not only happening for you, but with you in perfect enfoldment. Following your lead, following your focus, following your energy, and ultimately, 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 always, everything is happening for the utmost and highest good. For your utmost and highest good. so that every day you will know and feel and witness in every aspect of your life the miracle that you are. Even when you don't see how or why, everything is always happening miraculously to awaken you to your true self and to your miraculous nature. Tune in now to that part of you that knows this as true the part of you that deep down knows your brilliance and is intimately involved and aware of your greatness and unbounded, glorious, infinite nature. Feel that now. Right now, see and feel and become entirely aware of your miraculous nature. You are a miracle. And as a miracle, you could quite naturally attract miracles into your life. With your next big, deep, deliberate breath, feel that magnetic capacity arise within you now. Welcome your own miraculous capacity. Allow it to become a tangible and ever-present, reliable part of your life. Right now, inwardly say, welcome, welcome, welcome. I receive now gratefully. And then begin to slowly come back into the room that you're in, bringing all that awareness, all of that absolute connectivity with your miraculous nature in full consciousness and awareness. Bring it to life now and show up the truth of who you are. You are a miracle. So how fun that we've chosen to gather here tonight, to have everybody show up in the same place at the same time, even though we're connected through the internet from all different parts of the world. But this is an especially fun and, and interesting 
place to be right now because the world can feel so tumultuous if we look at the bigger picture of things and we look at how people are showing up all over with lots of challenges at hand and they've overcome challenges over the last few years and are still in a place where we largely think of ourselves as needing to shore ourselves up to just sometimes make it through a day. Well, this is a path that everybody on planet earth has access to and everybody really, 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 whether they know it or not, wants to live a miraculous life, a life where every day we transcend the mundane and the mayhem and all of the things that can captivate us so often and let ourselves just relax into a completely different reality. These realities are parallel. The world that we most of us live in that we turn on the news and hear and see in the headlines and then this other world that's very subtle and although it's ever present you have to be able to tune your antenna and your acumen to be able to access it and that's what we're going to talk about tonight so you're in the right place if you believe in the miraculous or would like to believe in the miraculous or access the miraculous, if you've had experiences of the miraculous yourself and would like to experience that more, maybe more consistently. And maybe, um, as I say, I truly believe that we are all here in a state that's capable of experiencing miracles all day, every day. And when we're not experiencing miracles all day, every day, then we're somehow just a little bit off of our own perfect divine path. And so all we have to do is get ourselves realigned. And then we start to see that a whole different reality exists. So that's the utmost here is to be able to be in that place where not only do you believe or hope or wish that miracles were real, but that you actually feel it and see it and experience it every day in your everyday life. When I first came to this realization, you know, I had hoped that miracles were real. I grew up in um, a place where I had read lives of the saints and things when I was a little girl, I was captivated by this, you know, where Disney left off my hope and wish for the miraculous kind of took over. And I saw these lives of people who seemed to be extraordinary and exceptional. And I thought, wow, if, if they could do it, maybe I could do it. But I also, at the same time that I heard about these kinds of exceptional people, was also told that I was just this normal little kid in a normal neighborhood, in a normal state, in a normal country, and that this is unusual and, and special, and that maybe um, it was way too far out of reach for me. So I had this little tiny seed of a hope. I didn't have this big, expansive knowledge that this was real. So it took me a while in my own life to be able to, to step up to where that, that seed of a thought of a longing that I had when I was a little girl, you know, even when I was just in elementary school, I'd go sit in churches by myself where the candles were flickering and, and just be there in silence. It was something that I always resonated with was the, the part of life that felt set apart. And, um, but I didn't really know how to access it. So happily, there is a path that each and every one of us has access to. So again, if you're someone who resonates with the miraculous in any way, then this is um, uh, an, an absolute open door and clear pathway in. The only way I know this is because I've been living this way for well over 20, 25 years now. And even more, even before that, prior to that, but really ensconced in a miraculous life, helping people access the miraculous for, for over two decades. And it's very consistent and real and not crazy or strange. It's what we all hope to be what it is that life is all about. So back to when I first kind of had an awakening to my life being in this mode all the time, I realized that 
you know, what if everything we always wished was real actually is? And everything that we had hoped wasn't, isn't. And that like in, encapsulates what this is, that truly everything you always wished was real actually is. The divine has our back. The universe is set in perfect motion. This, this dream of separation from the divinity that so many people are ensconced in and having their challenges and problems on a day-to-day -day basis is not the reality of this world that the miraculous taps and touches every day. So we might get little windows of, of this miraculous world at first, but then as I said, as we begin to let ourselves be aligned with this much more expansive and capable nature that we all have, miracles are just a symptom of being aligned with that. So, what you want to know about me is that, um, again, I've been in this world for over 20 years, but I started out again with that little seed of longing in me that was persistent and never left. But, you know, in my 20s, I was a typical college student and person who kind of like thought all about the spiritual stuff was sort of like put it on a back burner so I can have fun and party and do the things that 20 year olds do. And then I wound up in the world of advertising and, and fashion as a model and a commercial actor. So I was really in a world that's very superficially oriented. I felt I was a body. So when I first came upon A Course in Miracles, I saw it in a, a little new age bookstore that was right where I was going on an audition. And I stopped like I always did. And, you know, I still kept that same kind of resonance with going into places that felt more deeply rooted from when I was a little kid, but I was living in this superficial world. And when I first saw A Course in Miracles in this bookstore, it was across the store from me and it had this illumination to it. It kind of shone at me over on the bookshelf and I didn't, it scared me. Uh, a little bit. I was uh, thinking, you know, what's up with this? But I had been asking, I had been asking, you know, not just to be positive, not just to be happy, fleetingly happy, to know if there was something more that, you know, maybe these saints I had heard about as a little girl knew or onto something that I just didn't have access to or understand. But by that time in my life, I had lived enough of the fun. I had you know, been going back and forth to Europe as a model. I had lived a, a, around a lot of things that were what appeared to be really successful. And I just felt that none of that was really making me feel fulfilled. And so it was time for me to learn and find out if there really was something more. So when I opened up A Course in Miracles as, as the book, A Course in Miracles, it's 365 lessons that you do to get you through to the other side into a perspective and, a, and, a, and an alignment with the truth that you are a miracle. It takes quite a lot to undo who you think you are while you're on your way to becoming realized of who you are, but you, we all already are in the state of perfection. The meditation that I just did with everyone, I truly, truly, truly believe with all my heart that we are miracles and that we just forgot. And that's where all the pain and problems arise from. So, so I, you know, went into the Course in Miracles. I hid it under my couch and did it completely alone. I didn't want anybody in my superficial world or even in my not superficial world. I had small kids at the time. I was married and had a house and all these things that people aspire to. But I didn't want any of that to stop me or to make me get distracted. So I hid it under my couch. I took out A Course in Miracles and I really did it very doggedly for about two and a half years. Every time a lesson was challenging, like something like today you were the light of the world, 
I just feel like, okay, I'm doing this until I feel I'm the lad of the world. And sometimes that took quite a few days. I just did it over. And then I finally said, okay, I did it as best I could. And I'd go on to the next. So it took me quite a while to really begin to get the rhythm of not beating myself up too much for being not capable of even understanding some of these lessons sometimes because I was trying to intellectualize them. But then little by little, I was living them and the transformation was taking place. Now, anyone who's experienced true transformation know that it's not necessarily a walk in the park, that you are sometimes going through massive undoing. And so I had built up my whole self to be a certain way and to be like the picture perfect life that could have all been on a commercial um, you know, magazine cover or commercial spread. Everything in my life was really an amazing life on the outside. But again, I was feeling empty. So as this transformation started, it was more and more difficult for me to reconcile what was going on inside of me and what my outer world was like. So I wound up finally realizing after these two and a half years that the whole and most important part of this path towards the miraculous is the undoing of the mind that believes that we're not miraculous, that we have to work so hard, that we have to perform in life, that we have to achieve all these things, and that it's always like a carrot on the stick. We're never going to really get there. And all of a sudden, I realized I, I could forgive all that. And the path of A Course in Miracles is true forgiveness. And it's not, it has a, a different kind of forgiveness about it. That it's not that you say, okay, I'm a better person now, or I learned, you know, how to be a better person and that person wronged me, but I can be the bigger, better person. It's that you realize it never happened the way you think. If we all believed that we were divine, then would we act the way we act sometimes that's so small and so problematic and causes chaos and attracts chaos? And the relationships that we have can be like maybe this deep. But if we knew we were divine and we knew we were here as a miracle and we, and we kept that realization all day, every day, what would that look like? And so I realized that nothing in my past had actually happened the way that I thought it did. And so I could forgive that. I could forgive every person who I held some kind of a grudge against or felt that they wronged me in any way. And that was hard enough, you know, to really sincerely do that. But then to see once I did it, I kept having better relationships with the people and realizing, hey, wait a minute, they're not, they're not so bad or that wasn't that was little compared to the, the rich relationship I have now. And finally, I came to the last person to forgive. Very surprising to me. I didn't realize this would happen. And I realized it was me. I was the common denominator in my own life. Me and my little voice of insignificance and the one who was always challenged by circumstances and had to perform or do things that made me uncomfortable. And I realized that I had to forgive myself. So I got on my knees one day in my living room when the kids are at school and I was by myself. And it was kind of typical for me having hit A Course in Miracles to have this whole kind of altered reality going on in my life where I was really sincerely, deeply committed to my spiritual path. But then on the outside, I was just this normal person going to PTA meetings and I'm going to do commercials from here and there and, and just having a, in quotes, normal life, professional wife and mother. And what happened is I, I felt my heart crack open and I realized that I had largely lived a life where the, the amount of feelings that I would let come in or let be felt by me were minuscule compared to the amount that, that we have radar for days for miracles. When we're our true self, we are capable of so much more. 
heightened senses at the very least, but our capacity to engage and to, to receive is so much more that I had only been, you know, running on an empty tank from, from most of my years up until that point in my thirties at the time. And I had no idea. And I was micromanaging a large amount of my life. Like, I think maybe some of you can appreciate that and, and relate to that. So what you want to know about all of this is that all of your problems are contingent on your perspective. And once you adopt a miraculous perspective, everything shifts, everything shifts. And any problem that you might have had is seen in a different light. And it's sort of like before you had this little tiny, maybe pen light and you were shining on things and you'd see little parts of things and pieces of things and everything felt separate and it was confusing. Then all of a sudden, when you start to receive who you really and truly are and you get your ego to step back and get out of the way, then all of a sudden you start to see with this as though you have a floodlight lighting up your path in life. And that's when it becomes very evident that miracles are paving your way every day. We don't at that point micromanage away the miraculous. I had no idea that I had spent a good deal of my life up until that point, micromanaging away the miraculous, trying to plan things and trying to fix things and trying to be the one that was acceptable in certain circumstances and okay in others and step back and be humble here, falsely humble, by the way. The ego knows how to keep us from actually living our own best life. Even though all day, every day, the divine is handing it to us, gushing it at us, saying, please receive, receive, receive. There's so much more than this. And we're taking our little tiny pen light and shining it on the things that we most want to see or experience or, or we think is important, important to our small, little, minuscule, separate self, the ego. So your miraculous self is your true self. It's never gone anywhere. It came in with your first breath, the unbounded, amazing, infinite part of you. It's breathed you to life every moment since. It animates you. If it left you now, you'd be a pile of flesh and bones. You wouldn't be animated. You wouldn't be able to hear me now, and you wouldn't be able to engage with life or other people. And then when it leaves your physical body, it's just unbounded, infinite love. And that's what I learned in that time when I finally forgave myself, I realized that I hadn't been loving myself. And how can you know love if you don't love yourself when you are love and worthy of all things begotten by love. So it's a very small kind of complete circle that we come in with this capacity to tap at any moment, love and love's presence. But what keeps us from knowing that and experiencing that is this small separate voice that can be really loud and really obnoxious and sound like it's splintered in so many ways that they call it sometimes the committee. And all it does is speak to you of what's lack and deficit and problematic and all of the things about life that feel challenging and separate and, and as though if you were to go into all of that, you're going to have a really engaging battle. You're going to find yourself all the time needing to step up to a long-standing challenge. So again, I don't know how many of you have felt or experienced this, this part of life that can be very captivating and it makes headlines all the time. And you can open up your phone now and it used to be you could just open up a newspaper so you could kind of keep that in a pile in the corner somewhere. But now we have these phones with us almost 24 seven and constantly, constantly there are headlines and things that speak of what A Course in Miracles calls the illusion. 
it's not that you have to think these scary, crazy thoughts to, to, to kind of like see beyond this illusion. It's that you cannot be separate from the divine period. You cannot. And every day, all day, the reason why so many of us are exhausted is because we're doing battle with our own divinity. When all we really have to do is take a big, deep breath and relax and realize how awesome you are for having been able to put up with yourself for this long, when there's this amazing self that's ready now to emerge, an amazing, brilliant being who you've always wanted to meet, and it's you. So when I finally forgave myself that night, I went to bed. My husband was out of town. My kids were sleeping in bed with me because I was a very fearful person still. I know Course in Miracles says there's only love or fear, but I still lived a very fear-driven life. I felt separate and I didn't feel when it would, when the Course in Miracles would say, you're perfectly safe. And it would say things that really sounded to me like, if I get this, I'm really in a miraculous place. But I still had like the dog at the window and I had myself all set up with the alarm on and everything, afraid that, uh, you know, of whatever, of anything, anything out there, because I was living still a separate existence. Yet this night was different. I felt that I had this cement that was on my heart, broken, cracked earlier in the day when I forgave myself. And I realized literally that I had forgiven everyone in my life over those two and a half years that I thought I had some kind of problem with. So what that leaves you with, in case you don't know this, what you might be able to intuit this or feel this just in that idea of forgiving everything and everyone, it leaves you with a spacious mind. And think about this. Look around you now. What's the most important thing in the room that you're in? It's not my little Buddha statue behind me. It's not that beautiful little plant or the things that I have going on in the room around me. It's the space. The space is what supports us. If there was no space in your physical body, you'd be dust. If there was no space in the room that you're in, it would be crumbled cement and just nothing. And so I had space for the first time inside me. And I could resonate with the space. And I woke up that night at three o'clock in the morning. And I know because I looked at the clock, because typically if I were alone in the house with the kids, three o'clock in the morning, I would wake up and then I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. And I would just stay afraid the rest of the night till the morning, waiting for sunrise to come because I'd be afraid. And I looked at the clock and I said, well, I started to feel some cramps in my stomach. And I said, well, I believe in miracles heal this. Now that's significant. If you remember this, we're going to go through the, the three phases of miraculous, but we have different centers in our body and to feel my stomach having cramps and say, I believe in miracles now heal this. And I shot out of my body. I went into the heart of God. The only way to describe that is that I felt like I was in a soft down comforter of love that was all enveloping and it was oneness. It's isness. There's no this or that. I only can relate this in hindsight because in the moment you're just in awe. A Course in Miracles says awe is the only emotion reserved for the divine. And I was in awe. And you can feel why we say, ah, oh. <gasps> I went into breathlessness. I didn't know that that existed. Years of quantifying that later, going to India and finding out about things happening in, in the yogic tradition about awakening experiences. I had, was breathless from three in the morning till about 7.30 when I woke up with a breath and my heart was literally on fire, on fire. 
you know, I, I had read about that in those lives of the saints, how you always see that heart on fire where the, the, that's what drives saints is they just can't, they're, they're obsessed with the love. That's the immaculate love of the divine that there's no object it's everywhere. And so I went to the mirror to wash my face and looked up in the mirror when I washed my face to kind of splash water to, to step me out of it. And when I looked in the mirror, I saw myself without a body. Now I had been a, a model for at that point for many years and had worked with some of the most beautiful people in the world. And I looked at this being in the mirror that was a sh shimmery golden light looking at me with eyes that were the most loving eyes I had ever seen in my life. And it was me looking at me as the real me. And I said, that's what everyone is. So all of this, the next three days, I stayed in a space of my mind suspended so that I could see everything that I had missed while my mind had cogitated it away. All of the beauty in life was just laid bare to me. And what that looks like is that your senses are on high, high capacity. The grass looked like emeralds. And when birds sang, it was like symphonies and everything was beautiful. And, and I could see how everyone was missing the encounters, what A Course in Miracles calls holy encounters that we have all day, every day that just look like random or mundane things would be someone pushing a shopping cart and passing someone else who was moving a shopping cart and they missed each other. And I'm thinking that was you, that's the soul of you orchestrated that because the divinity of us is constantly orchestrating our awakening. So from that point on, during that time that I was breathless and I came down through layers of, of a near-death experience, I saw my whole life, what I had thought was going on and what was actually going on through the eyes of the divine. I heard, now you see how I see, now you see how I see. And I watched all of the circumstances in my life that I had reasoned away as problematic and big problems and big pain in my life. And I saw it through the divine's perspective that you forgot your God, what we call God, infinite love, infinite perfection. You forgot. And that's the only problem you've ever had. And so that's the only problem you've ever had. I just want to tell you now, any problem you've ever had, no matter how big it was, and I saw big problems that I had lived in my life, big challenges, things that, you know, people could say, oh, that's rough. But they were a joke when I realized that I had thought I was this little finite person called Maureen, and I am divine. So shortly after that, people just started coming to me. It all happened synchronistically. It always happened in a way that these people kind of paraded in. And in the beginning, they came with, in, in, with different challenges that were clusters so that people had the same kinds of challenges. And I could see what they were all the common denominator of what they were believing that were limiting beliefs that made them not see the miraculous. And so at that point, it became really obvious that, oh, we create our challenges to captivate us in order to keep us thinking small, or else it would be so obvious to us that the miraculous and the divine actually is, and it's everyone's birthright to return to love, to this massive and amazing everything that's love. So feel it now and you'll feel inside yourself. There's this little kind of insistent urge to be more, to not necessarily do more, but be more, to expand, to experience more in life. And, and the ego jumps on that and says, yeah, you're not good enough or yeah, you everybody else has this, or you need to do that, or to be better, you need to do this. 
But this part of us inside of us is telling us to expand. That's our true nature, to expand. And the only way that we can do that miraculously in alignment with the miraculous is to begin to focus on the love that we are. So what do you personally need to know about miracles? Well, first of all, that you are one and that any moment or time in this life that you didn't believe that you were sorely mistaken. And that in itself is the pain that you've experienced throughout life. So I see this as one problem, one solution. We forgot who we are and we're here to wake up. And the solution is to wake up to your miraculous nature. So I'm really fortunate that I have been able to work with so many sincere and amazing people that thought that they sometimes came to me for just a problem that seemed maybe smaller at the time or superficially uh, oriented at the time. Maybe they, you know, felt like they wanted to have more abundance in their life, a better job where they didn't like, you know, their boss, something like that. Or they were having family challenges, relationship challenges, or they might have had some kind of eating problems, eating disorders, or things that were help making their health be compromised. Some people have come with situations that had to do with health, chronic or acute conditions, very, very challenging physical conditions. And those are the things that typically bring us onto a path where we hope there's something more. So when you're in the midst of everyday life, you'll notice that the, the challenges captivate us. And that's a good thing. When you know there's something more, it's not a good or happy or healthy thing when you believe, you know, this is your lot in life and you just have bad luck or you've been trying really hard and it doesn't seem like things are working. You've been trying really hard while listening to this voice that motivates you and often demeans you at the same time kind of back and forth, back and forth, the voice of separation. It's the human condition. So you don't feel bad about this. You just realize it's the human condition. And guess what happened? Every single year you lived from the time you were that miraculous little baby, you got more and more conditioned into this life. And as you got conditioned, you also sometimes felt more and more oppressed I remember like talking to some kids who were, I, I, at one point in time, I used to teach the, the religious studies classes on weekends in, in uh, the, a church nearby me when my kids were small so that my own kids wouldn't be conditioned into life this way. I wanted to teach their classes. So I just teach all the kids that would come. I started when they were really little because I knew that they still had it. They still had the awareness and capacity to see heaven everywhere. And that would be what we do instead of me teaching them things in a book that was, you know, what we, I was supposed to be teaching them. They said in the beginning, when they were teaching the teachers how to teach the kids, they said, well, you know, little six and seven year olds don't know how to judge. So we have to teach them. And I thought, oh, no, that's not, not going to happen in my world. And instead, I take them out side and I'd say, okay, everywhere you look is heaven. Like, let's look at the sky, lay on our backs and teach them that you can actually disappear clouds. Don't know if you guys know that. You can actually look at the clouds and watch them vanish while you look at them and let yourself focus on the light, being the light. And so we do that, we disappear clouds, and that's symbolic of all these clouds in our mind that obscure that we're the ray of the sun, the sun stays in the heavens, just like the divine, and we came to earth to touch the earth with that divinity, and we're the ray of the sun, we're not the clouds, we can disappear the clouds, and then I'd say, take a little patch of earth and just find heaven there. And they come back with little tiny bugs and show me all kinds of pieces of dirt and stuff in there. And they find heaven in a tiny little 
postage stamp of earth, because that's who we are when we're young and haven't yet learned how to judge. And so we have this miraculous nature in us. And that's when you had days where you could believe in all those magical kind of things that, that fairy tales were about. But those are even a very small version of the reality because miracles blow away magic, blow it away because it's the consistent reality of our life. So what you most want to know about miracles is that they're not crazy and woo woo. They're, they're not only for special people. I absolutely, the other thing I said when this happened is if I can do this, anybody can do this. If I can actually clear my mind from the crazy concepts that I had conditioned myself into through fear, you know, I took the ball and ran with it when all the people who were well-meaning in my life, everyone's always well-meaning in your life, the adult figures and the teachers and the parents, they all are doing the best they can to keep you safe and sane in a world that they condition you into instead of letting you know and thrive with your miraculous nature. So I said this and I truly know it to the core of me that if I could do this, anybody could do this. I was literally like one big ball of fear and confusion. My own personal world was a ball of fear and confusion. And so if I can do it, I know anyone can do this. But there are some nice, clear foundational steps that I'm going to lay out for you. And there's going to be things that I tell you that you're going to resonate with heart, mind, and soul and, and wonder why it's so simple that you didn't notice this before. So again, it's not woo woo. It's not, it, and it can feel like that. And it's sometimes the strangest thing because, you know, in counseling people for over 25 years now, people have come with major, major mayhem. I've worked in maximum security prisons and hospitals and schools that kids were killing each other. I've been in the down and dirty because it's transferable. Once I saw that my own pain wasn't real, I saw that nobody's pain is real. And the more that we begin to focus on the pain, the more real it seems. And we don't get to step outside of it to see our transcendent nature and why in fact that particular circumstance was custom made to wake you up to wake you up now look i just want to say this i believe awakening spiritual awakening is mental health period I believe that we're looking for all kinds of ways to, to be not depressed or irritable or having a hard, bad, awful, terrible day. And we don't know that we all came here to wake up. We all came here to wake up. I know it sounds pretty um, like a blanket statement, but it's true. And so that doesn't mean that anyone has a corner on this. <laughs> that means that we are going to find our place ourselves in the right place at the right time. And, and I do want you to know that you're ready for miracles if you're here and you're ready to not only experience miracles, but to awaken to a miraculous life. And it goes beyond miracles. Even the good news about this is that the divine is expansive and ever evolving and expanding more. So this miraculous path that masterful beings like this, A Course in Miracles, is a channeled work from two people who worked on it together in tandem, who were having a challenge in their psychology department at Columbia University. And they were running a world-class university psychology department, and they were fighting all the time. And they thought there has to be a better way. They asked for a better way. And then the woman, Helen Shuckman, began to hear voices. She thought she was psychotic. So she told her colleague, Bill Thedford, in the department, I'm hearing voices. And, and he said, well, what was it saying? And she said, it's like a commander. It keeps saying, this is a course in miracles. Please take notes. 
And he said, well, take notes. I'll tell you if you're crazy, because he knew if she was psychotic or not. And that was the inception of A Course in Miracles. I'm just going to ask whoever came in to mute yourself. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that's how A Course in Miracles came to be. And so if you can, if you feel that you're having any kind of conflict. That's how the inception of A Course in Miracles came to earth. It was as an answer to this infighting and problems that they were having, where two people came together and said, there must be a better way. If you've ever found yourself humble enough or sane enough or present enough to say, what am I doing? There must be a better way well, then just be really happy to know there is, and this is the way. So I'm going to give you some statistics here. First, again, you're here because you're ready for miracles, you're open, you're willing to receive, or you wouldn't be here now in a place where you can actually get access to the miraculous. This is all I am now is a doorway because I'm already living an amazing miraculous life for 20 something years now. What do you do when that happens to you when you didn't know it existed and now it's persistent in your experience and you've been helping people move into this place of, of freedom from their fear and challenges and, and, and issues that seem as though they're insurmountable, consistently helping people. And I'm not even, I don't even want to say helping people, guiding people, they're helping themselves move into an amazing and miraculous life. Well, what do you do? You just help more people. (laughs) There's nothing else to do here. It's the most fun thing to do. And it's the most fulfilling thing to do. And everything else is already done. The divine has already given us everything. We just have to open our eyes to see. Once your eyes are open, then the only thing you want to do is help everybody else open their eyes. So here's some really amazing facts and statistics. If you don't think you're blessed right now to be in this space, just hearing or talking or feeling in your heart something about the miraculous, then you're really going to know that you're in a blessed space after hearing some of these statistics. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, major depression is one of the most common mental disorders in the United States. It's estimated that 19.4 million adults or 7.8% of all adults in the United States had at least one episode of major depression in 2019. And that was before the pandemic. That's 19.4 million adults. That's rough. That's rough living out there. And if you've encountered any of these 19.4 million adults, if you're feeling relatively calm, then you know that at any moment you can feel unsettled here. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States, affecting 40 million adults in the US, 18 years and older, or 18.1% of the population every year. It's estimated that 19.4 million of adults have at least one episode of major depression. Panic disorder affects 6 million adults. Social anxiety disorder affects 15 million adults. These types of anxieties lead to eating disorders and headaches, irritable bowel syndrome, sleep disorders, substance abuse, ADHD, chronic pain and stress, leading to a multiple plethora of physical ailments, all of which can be healed miraculously. Why? one problem, one solution. You're divine and you're living as though you're not. Connect with the divine in a miraculous way and watch how all of these challenges and problems, depression, gone, social anxiety, gone, all these physical, mental, emotional symptoms, gone because you're no longer fighting with yourself. You're showing up to life saying, what do you have to tell me and teach me? What, where are you bringing me now into what states of grace? So I just wanna to say to you that I, I'm not just speaking pie in the sky. Again, if I could do it, anyone can do it. I'm very normal. 
in my orientation. I can do things extremely um, committed. And so that's helped me to be able to not have to, when I do teach or, or help people, they don't have to do things to the extreme that I've done it. You know, they don't have to hide a book under their couch for two and a half years and then do it like self-torturing in this way that I was thinking, what's wrong with me? I don't even get this book. What happened in that experience, by the way, is that I still never understood A Course in Miracles, even after the 365 lessons, I was trying to live it every day at the best of my capacity, but I still felt really stupid because I couldn't even open up the text and get through a page without feeling like totally lost. But when I had that awakening experience, the next time I didn't look at A Course in Miracles right away because doing anything intellectual thinking at all was like not appealing. I was in the throes of like allowing everything that life had to offer without thinking it away or judging it away. And I was used to pretty much judging myself the whole time I read A Course in Miracles because I felt so stupid and I felt like I'm just not getting this. And yet I know it's true because I can feel it. I, I, I can feel here that this is true. And so I opened it up a few days later just to say, what is going on with me? Because I was in that throes of a, a still mind and seeing everything everywhere revealed to me as the way I hadn't seen the miraculous before. And so I opened it up and it fell open to the passage, the chapter called The Forgiven World. I told you what happened. I forgave myself. And then this happened that night. I forgave my whole world up until I walked myself to the last person to forgive me perceiving everything the way I had. And there I was in the forgiven world. And it says in all your life, you have never seen anything so beautiful and captivating. And it's exactly what I was in the throes of. So I looked at that and then I turned the page and I realized I understood, I knew every word. And that came just as a revelation from that experience. I went from feeling so stupid that I couldn't understand it to knowing where to dot the I and cross the T on every sentence, literally overnight. And so I love that because I can help interpret A Course in Miracles, like I said, to everybody I've taught in so many different circumstances in, in those nursery school situations about helping them remember the miraculous and be involved in the miraculous, all the way up through the schools and high schools. I was teaching a course that I developed called The Course Creatively Opening to the Resource of Self-Empowerment so I could teach it in public schools teaching in prisons and where I was going weekly to, to support groups and teaching actually a course in miracles in prisons. And believe me, prisoners really got it because they were, they were kind of to the hilt had done the drama and they were ready to be able to say there must be a better way. And when you show someone who's done the best they could in these parameters of pain and are feeling completely stuck and you show them, no, we can go vertically out of this. You don't have to work your way out of it. Vertical is the way you can get out of this the fastest. They got it. They really got it. So it's been everywhere. I also have, uh, have taught at Harvard. I was a teaching fellow and, and, and I did research as a research fellow at the Langer mindfulness lab. And Everything, everything, everywhere I've been in all of these different situations in business world has been that very normal people know that there's the miraculous and yet they're not clear exactly on how to tap it. And that's where I come in with this capacity and with the transformational triad. So I just gonna read one more thing here. Um, Again, everything from depression to suicide to drug addiction, I've been there, done that with people over these years in very dramatic circumstances. And in every circumstance, a miracle is the answer. That shift in perspective to that you are divine is the answer. So listen to this. According to a poll conducted from Newsweek, the vast majority of Americans believe in miracles. 
84% said God performs miracles. 77 said God or saints heal sick people. 79% said they believe the miracles that are detailed in the Bible actually occurred. And nearly half said they've personally experienced or seen a miracle. Two thirds said they have prayed for a miracle. And 90% of Christians said they believed in miracles compared with 40% of non-Christians. Pretty amazing that the entire world practically is at least familiar with miracles, even if they kind of put them on the back burner or keep them off their radar if they think they're woo-woo or not applicable personally to them. But really to have two-thirds of people say they've prayed for a miracle what I believe about that statement is that many people don't ask for or look for the miraculous until they're in extreme hardship. And it might be, you know, praying for a child who's sick or just having an awful urgent situation that all of a sudden then we turn our eyes to the divine. It's unfortunate because again, we can be experiencing the miraculous all day, every day. And if we only turn on this light, the little flashlight looking for a miracle from time to time, it'll seem as though they're rare or hard to access. It also said that 87% of respondents said that they believe followers of other faiths can receive miracles. So that's kind of beautiful because I do want to say something about that. The reason why I love the miraculous as a path, you know, I studied, um, I got my master's in, in religious studies at Harvard. And so I know what it's about all kinds of faiths. And I feel like, again, they make things in multiple ways, multiple faiths make things feel exclusive or, or rare or set apart. That's one of the things that religions do is, is set apart time and space for people to do this in, in sacred ways apart from their everyday life. What I love about miraculous living is that you live it in the trenches day to day, all day. Like I said, if you're not experiencing miracles all day, every day, then you're not on your most perfect personal path. And it's very beautiful because we all have a different ray of the sun to bring to the earth. We can't get enough sun here. We all want every single little piece of this earth to be illuminated. And that means every single one of us has this miraculous capacity and came here to experience it and to unleash it on the rest of the world once we receive it for ourselves. That's a stipulation. You've got to receive it for yourself before you can give it. So there are plenty of myths about miracles, and I hope that we can kind of banish all of them. Again, they're not hard to access or inaccessible or only for special people. They're not crazy or woo woo or anybody who talks about the miraculous. Like I'm a very grounded person. I'd say that in the beginning it took me a while to ground myself because, you know, when you have an experience of the utmost and then you're on earth, it literally, uh, you know, made me cry everywhere I went for quite a while. And it's like, what's wrong with her? Nothing's wrong with me. That's why I'm crying. Like whoever doesn't have no who has nothing wrong with them. You know, it was just crazy to be in that situation where everything was perfect all the time and able to see that. And then the more I was able to impart that to people and have other people experiencing that, especially in the throes of their greatest pain, the more and more grounded it became, the more and more normal it became. And that's why this is so fun because it's such a normal and accessible path for everyone, completely non-denominational, not religiously or organized or oriented at all. Something for everyone of every little piece of of life. So what you want to know about taking action here and bringing miracles into your life is that it is an action oriented thing where you're actually in it's interesting because this is sort of an oxymoron. It's action oriented in that you're embodying it and you're not going to be sitting on a on the top of a mountain or in a cave, you know, completely still all the time. I will say that you'll be embodying stillness, but you'll be actively 
embodying stillness. And that's a beautiful and amazing capacity that we have that you want to experience and that you don't want to miss. So it's not rare. This is about taking action with stillness. And then one other thing that I'd like to say about this is that because it's accessible to everyone and because you're here now, that means it's accessible to you. But because we're focused in this way, it's especially acceptable and accessible to you because most other people are scattered in their thinking and looking at multiple other places for answers. When you begin to focus this way and you start to see the miraculous every day in your, in your day-to-day life, it's captivating. And you'll find yourself just really feeling as though there's no better or other way to live. So you're going to feel yourself reignited in your passion for life. You're going to feel yourself feeling more purposeful. You're going to feel yourself feeling more committed to things that you actually feel a deep resonance with in your life that you might have put on the back burner. You're going to have a focus that brings you much more uh, deliberately showing up to life. And the other thing that happens is you are more of a receptacle. You're very receptive. Remember your antenna are out. And so you start to bring things to yourself like resources and abundance. You know, there's a lot going on out there now about manifesting. And I would say that manifestation is sort of uh, um, an aspect of the miraculous that speaks of the, the capacity for all of us to be miraculous. And I highly recommend focusing on things like your health and well-being or your abundance or things like that, because they become very tangibly, obviously more um, in alignment with ease and grace and peace that the miraculous brings. Okay. So I think that from what I've said so far, you know, if you're in the right place, because you can feel a deeper resonance that there is something more and that you know that this isn't crazy or absurd and that's something that you really feel comfortable accessing and maybe not completely and entirely 100% aware of what you're stepping into, but this is great because it's only your own life. You're not going anywhere. You're going to stay in your own life, but you're going to be awakening in multiple ways to your true self. So what happened and in, in the path that I teach personally in, in the miraculous and how to be a miraculous person and therefore move towards your own self-realization or awakening is called the transformational triad. Came to me in one fell swoop, these things that I teach the, the most wholeheartedly are the ones that I know were delivered directly from the divine. So uh, I used to, I manifested miraculously a place on the ocean where I lived for about 11 years, directly on the ocean, beautiful tropical beach. And I used to, I really wanted to manifest that so that I could meditate on the sunrise. I knew that that was a, an experience that I wanted to have. And so manifested this, there'll be a story that I'll tell at a later time. But while I was walking on the beach one morning at sunrise, I was helping a lot of people overcome a lot of their major challenges. And I thought, you know, if I could somehow put uh, words to what I'm actually doing, rather than helping them to purify their perception about things and to see the miraculous where they before they hadn't help me quantify what the heck I'm doing here for the last like 10 years at that point. And so I heard, and it came in one fell swoop in an image that it's the transformational triad. This is a transformational journey of the miraculous. And the first phase is miracle mindedness, where you shift your mind. And this is, it's beautiful. It's like step right in from the get-go. There's no like have to be austere or work your way there or learn how to do these things. You can step right into the miraculous with this first phase. And it's an image of a triangle. And the top of it is just like our mind is at the top. Miracle mindedness, you purify your perception, you purify your mind. 
you are showing up to the place where you embrace a new reality. So it's embrace miracle mindedness. And what that means is that as I illustrated in what I've said so far, there's this parallel reality going on for everyone. You know, the fact that I could see and explain to you the things that I did see, it's the world of the miraculous that exists for everyone, but it's largely invisible to people because we're so busy focusing on the things that often breed discontent like headlines and like, you know, what color shirt am I wearing today? Or how's my hair look? We don't necessarily look behind the curtain to see what's going on in everyday life. And it's amazing when you start to shift your mind to miracle mindedness, this is how, you know, often I'll have people who are in crisis situations show up to me and uh, through referrals, people will say, you know, go to Maureen because there's, they just have tried multiple other things and it hasn't helped them. And knowing that they don't know what to say or how to say what I do. And, but I do know that most often if I speak with someone, the very first time we speak, I can help them shift their perspective to be miracle minded. And so what happens is that you start to see the miraculous in your day-to-day -day life. You literally, it's like your eyes were veiled and you start to see. And that's phase one of this transformational triad. Now you'll notice that the, the triangle in the image that I use has a fire in the inside because that's the experience that I had when I awoke into the heart of God and came back the next day to see my life, you know, completely unveiled and no ego filtering things. I was on fire. And it's this true transformation where it's like, you know, that that alchemical thing where it turns the the gross. Uh, metal into gold. And that's the image why it's also gold, because we have a golden being inside each of us. But we, we are so, the divine is so beautiful and loving and unconditionally loving that it knows, look, you're going to wake up. Everybody has to wake up. It's an impossible dream. You can't be separate from the divine. So the, the divine doesn't push us and prod us and say, come on, you lazy loser, keep, get on with this. It lets us take our time because it also exists in timelessness. So the world of reality has no time and space. It's just is divine perfection divine perfection. So that's the world behind the curtain that we're navigating in time and space with little insertions of grace that we're trying to see out of this illusion of separation from the divine. So first phase, miracle mindedness, you are embracing a new reality because A Course in Miracles begins with, I'm paraphrasing this little passage that begins it just because it says only love is real nothing real can be threatened herein lies the peace of the divine it doesn't say only love is real it says that only reality is real but only love is real and so when we start to unveil our eyes and we see that we're only looking for and seeing love everywhere a whole different picture arises the next phase is miracle matrixing. And I love that this came to me because I haven't seen any other path that is actually this effective in, in accessing the miraculous or any awakening because it was a missing piece. For so many people, they imagine if they shift their mind and start to see differently, that that's where it ends. And so People go about saying, this is what a miraculous life is like, you know, manifest this or get that. And you're going to have a great life if you can attract these things. But the second phase, miracle matrixing is embody, embrace, embody, and your mind, this is your heart. We sink it all down from our head, because even if we start to see the miraculous everywhere, you want to live the miraculous. You don't want to miss out on this one. 
And I noticed when that came to me, how, how unfortunate it's been for so many people throughout time who were really compelled and they had this miraculous shift in their perspective, but then they go right out and begin to teach people about the miraculous without maybe necessarily having lived it first. I only speak about the things that I've personally lived because I don't feel I have any authority to talk about things that I don't know, which is also a wonderful request for me to give to the divine. I just said, look, I'm only going to speak about what I know firsthand. So guess what happens? You have a lot more experiences because the divine wants you to be able to speak firsthand about things. It's going to give you really great top of the mountain experiences that I can speak about with full authority. I've lived them. So everyone wants this. I would never have known this unless I started living it myself. That if you start talking about something before you've lived it, you kind of sidestep your own states of grace. So the miracle matrixing allows for you to embody something that's exceptional and extraordinary. You'll start to see your health and well-being miraculously morph. You'll start to see that you attract many more circumstances. You know, I didn't set out to go to Harvard. That just all happened. These things that you attract start to happen. It's sort of like, okay, I'm living in Cambridge. What do you do when you're in Cambridge? You're going to squeeze every bit of juice out of an orange. Harvard's here down, down there. So might as well go. It, it wasn't that I had to work hard for anything after awakening. And that's when you matrix this, you start to see how the divine leads you on such an eloquent path that's personally paid for you. You don't want to miss this. So when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, I help them shift their minds and then I hold them in this space of living it because it's amazing. It's like a honeymoon when you first begin to see and experience the miraculous and your eyes clear and your, the veil is lifted. But when you start to live it, now I don't have to say anything anymore because you have the experience yourself of everything I might have talked about to inspire you to get here. But how amazing when you've lived something, your very own self, now you have the authority to be able to jump in and engage with others in a very powerful and profound way. You become the embodiment of the divine. And that is something you do not want to miss. So that's miracle mindedness, miracle matrixing. And then the third phase is miracle mastery. Now you'll notice there's often pictures of images of saints or of Jesus where his heart is radiant and his hands are out and extended and he's extending the divine. Embrace, embody, and expand. That's miracle mastery. After and only after you embody the miraculous so that everything I've said, all of these things that I've said about, you know, being able to annihilate depression and being able to step into your own best life and full of purpose and meaning and know that it's your own purposeful passion that you're living the life that you're living because you'll be guided so impeccably by that time. You're here feeling the voice of God. You've opened your heart. You're opening your mind. You're walking into situations completely open, like a, a massive antenna to receive. And then arms wide open, you now have the capacity to give. I'm very, 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 um, what will I say? How do I say this? I hold people to this path very sincerely because when you give before you've embodied, you do miss out on that full blown heart expansion and you start to give away before you've received fully. So what I always say is that when you get into miracle mastery mode, you're giving from the overflow. That's rare. And amazing, you're not giving from the deficit ever. Your mind's open, your heart's open. The divine is now flowing through you. This is now a vertical experience where you're receiving fully and you're overflowing into life. So it's not like you're gonna show up to some horrible situation that people are in pain and try to fix things. 
your overflowing peace, your overflowing your connectivity, your overflowing well being. There's no sacrifice or suffering involved whatsoever. And I love this. And again, when it came to me in that revelation of this is the, such a perfect path to open people up to the miraculous, I, I just saw, you know, this is immaculately given by Jesus because he's the guy that really taught us, look, no suffering is necessary. There's no problem with me. I resurrected. I got off the cross. And sacrifice and suffering are not part of a miraculous path. So in order to really masterfully impart miracles, you want to be in that place where it's just natural as you embody it, that you're going to be sent from place to place to anchor and root and extend and expand miracles wherever you go as a very natural way of breathing and living in the world. Now we're back to what you started out as when you were first born. You're a miracle and you deserve to experience yourself as the miraculous every single day. You're here to experience yourself as a miracle, living a miraculous life. And, and let's just define miracle here now so that you can be really clear on what it is. It's a shift in perspective. And that means you now see and know and experience yourself as the divine. In a body, you're a human being, but your being is what's running the show. And your human body then for the first time gets a chance to really, really, really relax. When you notice how much we micromanage our lives, it's a wonder that all of us aren't in more pain and in perpetual problems. But you saw the statistics. It's not an easy life we've been making ourselves live here. I do have to say that when you get sent, when you're in miracle mastery mode, oh my gosh, the world that you will inhabit, there's never a problem that's not capable of being transcended. Look again, look at what happened to me. Here I am, the person with the dog at the window and the alarm system on and everything just up until the night I woke up. Then I'm working in maximum security prisons and I'm doing things that I find exhilarating and amazing because first of all, terribly shocking that this would all happen to me in one lifetime, that I'd be able to shift my perspective that dramatically, that I would be able to welcome situations that normally would have, you know, I would have run away from fast, run away fast. And instead I welcome and walk into, and I have to say, I'm sure that some of those people in the prisons or in the situations that I've helped people in have been helped. But what did I get out of that in the process? What did I get from being able to know that I can transcend fear to that degree so that I welcome challenges? The other thing about this is that you'll notice that the world will still be a little bit tumultuous. Like the headlines, I still see the headlines or things that are going on. It's not like I'm oblivious or that I'm tone deaf. I'm aware. You're even more aware. But what awareness feels like is when you see a headline, you know it's a snippet, a dramatic snippet from an ever-evolving towards perfection circumstance. And you look immediately to the perfection and don't get hung up in the mayhem or the problem or the drama. Imagine what that feels like to be able to walk through life with your heart open, your mind open to receive anything, literally anything, and then to be able to expand the miraculous into those situations. So that's the crux of the transformational triad. So this is going to be, I'm going to go more in depth into the three parts of these over the next weeks. I'm going to be sending out an email and make sure you pay attention. We're going to go into miracle mindedness first. 
And then in another week, in another session, we're going to go into miracle matrixing. And then the next one, we're going to go into miracle mastery. And I'd like you all to be able to just like sit with this, let yourself feel what this time together that we've had has brought up in you and opened you up to and then you know you're invited <laughs> to the next phases of this because i want everybody to live a miraculous life so i'm wondering if anybody has any questions now if not i have a couple of questions that came in that are pretty basic but important questions about the miraculous and some people who couldn't be here who also wanted to be engaged in this but if anybody wants to you know put a questions in the chat or open up and come in and ask a question or have a comment or anything like that then feel free and um in the meantime, just know that you've been here for a reason that you're ready to access this full blown miraculous life now. And so I'll start out with answering one of these questions that came in earlier. And then if anybody has anything to say, just like either raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask a question. So here's a pretty fun and basic question. What is a miracle? It's a great question because people have all of those concepts about it, that it's otherworldly and unusual and rare. And what I want to say about it is that it's a shift in perspective. It means that you're going to be able to experience them every day, all day in your life, but where you would have possibly chosen a perspective that separates you or distances you from an experience. Instead, you'll choose a perspective that moves in with a curiosity from having an open mind and an open heart of where's the miracle here. And you're literally able to unveil it in any circumstance. So miracles collapse time and space. So that's why when you hear about people having miraculous healing, it's like they don't need six months of chemotherapy to, to awaken from the dream of cancer. They find themselves capable of healing their physical body through a very profound connection with their divine self, their perfect self that's always been perfect, always abides in a state of perfection. And then that will color and, and morph their experience in physicality, but it miracles collapse time and space. And the reason being is that they're insertions from the world of reality. And they speak of the reality beyond the limited world that we typically abide in, in the world of this and that, and an ego oriented world of separation. When you start to unite with your divine self, now you're really collapsing time and space. You're collapsing the space between you and your own divinity. I will tell you, this is the almighty of you. This is the unbounded of you. This is the infinite love of you. This is the healed healer of you. And so when you unite with that and you begin to live from that, everything becomes an opportunity for healing and everything becomes an opportunity to experience the miraculous. So what is a miracle? It's a shift in perspective that helps us to see things from a connection rather than a disconnect. When you feel yourself embody this unified mind, it's a completely different experience because someone doesn't feel like they're over there on the opposite end of the world or the opposite end of the table. They feel, and this, you can feel it when you feel love or you feel compassion, true compassion. You feel a connectivity that bridges the gap between time and space between you and someone else. You've, you've read or heard stories that make you your heart open or your mind open and uh, immediately you feel at one with someone on the other side of the world this is our true unified nature where love precedes everything and everything is an opportunity to bring love so a miracle speaks of love even in the circumstances where we might 
have a challenging or hard time finding love's presence? Well, when you really truly know what the miraculous is, you begin to embody it. And then you become the embodiment of love's presence. That's when the light starts shining everywhere you go and miracles become part of your everyday existence and pave your way all day, every day. Really powerful and profound. We all came here to do this. And that's why if we don't feel complete in our lives right now, or we feel any discontent, this is why. You came here to be a miracle. Nothing else is going to suffice. You came here to be complete and to know yourself as divine, at one with the divine. Okay, the next one, there's only three questions that I have. So if anybody has any other questions, just come on in with them. The next one is, what is the easiest way to access the miraculous? I love this. <laughs> First of all, the realization that you are miraculous. I mean, just go back to your birth. Just go back to the moment that you were born. There wasn't one person on planet Earth that denied that you were a miracle. Look at that beautiful, pristine, perfect form that came in here, teeny tiny toes and teeny tiny fingers and everything works. And even if a child comes in having some challenges, still everyone knows all hands on deck for that little miracle. And so you came in with that captivating, captivating presence. And it didn't go anywhere. You might have conditioned away, somehow it got conditioned out of you, your realization of that. But that's what you came here to continue to be, the ray of the sun, always connected to the truth of who you are. You came here to bring the light. So the easiest way to access the miraculous is to let yourself know and feel that sometimes it's just being in a place where you say, where's the miracle here? Where's the love here? And you might be told you're it, you're bringing it. And then you'll be told what to do, where, and how the other most profound way that I realized to access the miraculous. And of course, the miracle says this over and over again, become still, become still because we have the voice of the divine within us. We have the voice of our own best interest within us. And it tells us exactly how to unveil the miraculous in our lives. So getting still, meditating, just letting yourself have something going on in the background that's like white noise that isn't so interesting that your mind wants to think about it. Just let yourself get into a place where you might sit by the side of the ocean and just listen to the waves or be someplace where you're able to just let yourself be still. No performance. There's no performance to the miraculous. And also know that miracles and magic are two different things. You'll never have to work at the miraculous. It's not something that you, know, you can get and manipulate or try to contrive. That's more magic. Miraculous is given. It's the real reality that we unveil with miracle mindedness. We open our hearts to with miracle matrixing and we begin to live and extend with miracle mastery. So it's our birthright. And it's something that you don't want to miss out on at all. Okay. And then finally, what are the biggest mistakes people make when trying to access the miraculous? Well, I just said one of them, we mistake miracles for magic. It's not something that's a performance at all. It's a state of being. It's a realization of the beingness that underlines everything. So they're not something that you can manipulate or perform in, you know, big show in front of other people. They'll happen in front of other people who are open. And that's, there's nothing more fun. You know, I take people on miracle journeys around the world pre-pandemic, haven't done one lately, but we show up miracle minded and then living the miraculous. I can't tell you how much fun that is to be in a place with people who are all seeing the same miracles at the same time, because that's the orientation. And that is a worldwide 
capacity because I've done it with people all over the world. So head to sacred places and sacred sites and, and expect the miraculous and you're sure going to find it. So it's not too hard or evasive or elusive to access. That's the other thing about the miraculous can happen anywhere at any time. And you're sort of the person who can actually be the antenna that brings it in that allows for this to be something that you're just a walking, breathing miracle all day, every day. Another thing that is a misnomer is that miracles are for special people. Again, you were born a miracle, no denying that. And so the only thing is, is you forgot. It's time to remember. So this isn't something that's for special people or people who really, really try hard and go through all the austerities or things like that. The reason why I love a miraculous path is that it happens in your everyday life, all day, every day, eating a bowl of cereal or, or a piece of fruit or going to the supermarket or letting yourself enjoy a conversation with a friend that you haven't seen in a long time. That is the opportunity for the miraculous, being in a hard and challenging situation, opportunity for miraculous. There is nowhere on planet earth that is exclusive and cannot have miraculous experiences and that you cannot anchor the miraculous in. This is universal and, and has nothing that excludes it from anyone in any way, shape or form. Another way to access the miraculous is, again, not through hard or austere practices. It's things like becoming still, relaxing, breathing, having fun, letting yourself resonate with joy and peace and ease and the things that you really love. Create. Enjoy yourself showing up as, as a conduit for all good things. This is not an austere, challenging, hard path. This is the most fun path of your own life. You don't leave your own life to access it. You shift your perspective to be able to access it every day, all day within your own life. Another thing is that, that, that would be something that keeps miracles at bay is caring about the good or bad opinions of other people. I know I said some things tonight that might seem exceptional or weird or strange or odd, I've come to the place that I have not cared about the good or bad opinions of other people in, in quite a while, because you will micromanage away the miraculous. At the very time that people need miracles the most, sometimes they're the most judgmental. And if you're in that space where you're paying attention to other people's judgments, you're not gonna shine at the most opportune times. And that's when miracles appear. So the fun part of this is that, again, there's no place that a miracle isn't capable of being present. So you're letting yourself do this all day, every day in a way that it's unapologetic and you don't care about the good or bad opinions of other people. And I'd say the last unfortunate thing about that people have a misnomer about is that, again, it's not for them, but putting it off putting it off, leading a mundane life that's unfulfilling or challenging or depressing or all those problems that humans, the millions of humans are finding themselves in, putting off your own miraculous life. It's time now to experience this. It's time for you now to jump wholeheartedly into your own miraculous life. So I hope everybody joins me for these next Miracle Mindedness, Matrixing, and Mastery sessions that we're about to have. And I'll send you more details about that. Anybody who ever wants to contact me, just hit reply on the email I sent and I'll get that. And in the meantime, I just hope that everybody feels much more inspired to their true divine self. That's kind of like nudging them from the inside. I can speak from the outside, but nudging you from the inside that it's really time now to begin to step into this miraculous life wholeheartedly and completely and fully. 
So big, big, huge, huge, huge blessings, everybody. I love, love, love you, you beautiful miracles, you. And let's just all show up here now in a way that we really know that this is the only kind of life we want to live. And it's the only kind of life that we deserve because you came in a miracle. You want to leave this place knowing you're a miracle too. So big love, everybody. Have a blissful, blissful night. <laughs> Bye-bye now. I'll send out a recording of this as well. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>